Hello, folks. Thank you for tuning in to Do Wilderness, a YouTube channel devoted to maximizing your fun, safety, and enjoyment of the wilderness in our world. This is video one of a five video series on core knots. This particular video will be showing you how to tie a clove hitch, which is a knot used to tie the end of a rope to something. And it's easy to untie. Our second knot is a bowline. And a bowline is used to put a loop in the end of a rope. Our third core knot is a butterfly knot. And a butterfly knot is used to put a loop in the center of a rope. And guess what? It's easy to untie. Our fourth knot is a sheep bend. And a sheep bend is used to tie two ends of a rope together. And hey, guess what? It's easy to untie. And then our last one will be a simple hitch. And a hitch is used, generally used, in conjunction with a core knot to make it stronger or to modify it in some fashion. Before I show you how to tie these knots, I'll show you uses. My sister brought this to my attention on a hike last weekend. I was telling her how I'm gonna do my first video on knots on how to tie a clove hitch. And the first words out of her mouth were, oh good, what's it used for? That makes a lot of sense. Who cares how to tie a knot unless you have a crystal clear picture of what it's used for. Also, I'm going to be showing you how to tie a quick release version of these knots if it can be done. The quick release version is very helpful in expanding the functionality of, uh, of these knots. So with that being said, the uses of a clove hitch. One of the main uses of a clove hitch is to begin a lashing. I'm going to do two wraps. And then on a lashing, what pulls it together is called a frap. 
after you do your wraps, you pull it together tight with a frap. I'm going to do two fraps. I don't want to get carried away here. And then you finish your lashing with a clove head. Now I got a lot of extra rope here. The nice thing about clove hitch is that you can tie one on top of each other. So I just tied actually two clove hitches. I'll tie three of them. Then take all that excess line and start getting rid of it. There you go. Another use of a clove hitch is to tie a rope off to something. Now right here I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be doing a quick release version of it now I was told a long time ago John Wayne used to tie his horse up with with this but and here's, and this is a quick release. There we go. I just dropped a rotten piece of wood over the edge of this bridge and, and the piece of wood is tied with a clove hitch as well so let me pull it up here and show you even after this clove hitch went taut from that wood is still a piece of cake to untie. The clove hitch is basically used to tie a rope to something. If you're in camp and you want to hoist something up in a tree, well, you use a clove hitch. to tie on to your throwing object. And as you, you can see here, a clove hitch comes on the comes undone very simple. Then take what you want to hoist and tie it to the rope with a clove hitch. So, so the end of a rope And then 
a half hitch on top of it. I'll be showing you the half hitch on top of it as well. And hoist what you want up. Then you tie that off with a clove hitch too. Go. And since I tied a quick release one, it comes undone fast. Also, hold hitch can be used for your clothesline or just stringing a line somewhere in camp. It's a clove hitch is used to tie the end of a rope to something. And then we'll, we'll just continue this here. Your loop in the center. Up tight. And finish it off with a close it. A very, very handy knot. Welcome back. Now we're going to learn how to tie a clove hitch. Before you get started here, you're going to need four feet of recreational line, nylon line. When you go to get your line, if you don't already have something that's uh, suitable, you're going to look for Look at the largest size it comes in and the smallest size it comes in and get the size that's right between the two. That will be the easiest to work with. No twine, none of that yellow stranded twine. It's too hard to get a visual. It's, it's just too hard to see clearly. Now there are four ways to tie a clove hitch. The first way I'm gonna show you is tied on a closed object. The second way is tied on an open object. The third way is a clove hitch that is strengthened with a 
half hitch. Have to excuse me a second to the beauty of my surroundings here kind of overtook me. And the last way I'll be showing you is a quick release clove hitch. Now, I highly suggest you tie the closed clove hitch here today, or when you have time, tie it 50 to 100 times in a row. It won't take all that long. And once you have tied it, the, and once you have tied the closed object clove hitch and gotten a good grasp of it, all the others are going to be simple. So with that being said, this is how to tie the closed object clove hitch. The two clips that followed, the two clips that follow will be slowed down 90% so you can follow along. There will be no sound guiding you how to tie it. I'm not going to be talking about do this and that. It's going to be strictly slow motion. You follow along. You make it look like what I'm doing. I think this is a very simple way of doing it. And a clove hitch is a very easy knot to see visually when it's tied right. All righty, good luck to you. How to tie a closed object clove hitch.
Howdy, welcome back. I hope you learned how to tie a closed object clove hitch. Now we're gonna learn how to tie an open object clove hitch. And the first instructional clip on how to tie it will have sound, but after that, it'll be slowed down 90% again with no sound. So everything still holds true. Don't use twine. Have at least four feet of nylon cord. And good luck to you. This is how to tie a open object clove hitch. It begins with an overhand loop. Overhand loop, so it looks like this. Then a second overhand loop. So they look like this and take the second overhand loop and put it behind the first and then slip it over and pull it tight.
Now, hope you learned how to tie those two variants, the closed and the open object one. This next variant is, is very simple. It's a clove hitch with a couple of half hitches on top of it. And the reason why we tie them this way is so there's no way that this will come undone. Uh, if it gets knocked around. And again, there will be sound on the first clip and then there will not be sound on the second and third ones and they will be slowed down to 90% again. Good luck to you. This is a clove hitch. Oh, uh, yeah, you can tie either an open or a closed clove hitch first on this one. Choose. So the important thing is, is that we learn how to put a couple of half hitches on top and it's not tough. So it will be slowed down. 90% and there will be sound on the first clip. Alrighty, good luck to you. There's something that you can also do with it, a clove hitch. And uh, I have heard a lot of crab boats up in Alaska tie their crab pots on this way so uh, over so it looks like this and back through so you have something that looks like this and pull it tight and then this is how you make it stronger is by simply putting a hitch on the top of it. And I have been told there are a lot of crabbing boats up in Alaska that hold their crab pots on with, with a simple clove hitch tied off by a half hitch.
Well, wow, you just, we're really learning how to tie a clove hitch. Clove hitch city. This is how to tie a quick release one. And a quick release one uses a closed object clove hitch. And there will be sound on the first clip, but there will not be sound on the second and third, and they will be slowed down 90% again. How to tie a quick release clove hitch. The quick release version should be the last version that you learn because it's it's something that you want to tie fast. So take your rope, put it over like we did before, remember? And then in this time, instead of bringing the end of the rope under, you're gonna put it through like this. And then pull it tight. 